Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Teresa. I'm a registered dietitian and I work at Digestive Disease Center. Um, we have a few locations. Locations that I work at and see patients, I work out of the Fishkill office right in Westage. I also work out of the Poughkeepsie office in Mid-Hudson Regional Hospital. I specialize in a lot of different things. Celiac, IBS, um, eating disorders, I see adolescents, I see babies, I see um, childhood age, I see everything. Um, one of the things that, I see, that I've seen recently, probably because of the group that I'm in, it's a digestive disease group, is a lot of patients coming to me with IBS. And IBS. Anybody here know what IBS is? Yeah. Yeah? Anybody here have IBS and wants to raise their hand? <laughs> Um, so IBS stands for irritable bowel syndrome, okay? So anybody who has IBS or knows somebody who does, who, who has IBS, knows that it's very uncomfortable for those people. The thought for IBS used to be, there's no cure. There's nothing you can do for IBS, really. Maybe take a pill here and there and that's it. If you have diarrhea, maybe give you something for the diarrhea, constipation, maybe something for the constipation. But the thought was that there was never a diet that would help you with your IBS. Ten years ago, a doctor named Sue Shepard discovered that there are certain things in the diet that can help cure or at least alleviate the symptoms of IBS. And those things are called fermentable carbohydrates. And we're going to talk about them in a minute. Now, over the past 10 to 15 years, they've really researched this, okay? And it's, everything comes out of a university in Australia called the Monash University. And that university every day is testing new items to see if people that have IBS or are following this FODMAP diet can tolerate certain items. So this is cutting edge stuff. It happens constantly on a daily basis. I get updates of things that people can have or can't have that I have to tell people when they come to see me, yes, that's still okay to have. Or maybe what you told me, what you were telling me you're eating before and you're like, I'm still having a little bit of symptoms. Maybe now it's not okay because they finally tested that item. So this is really cutting edge stuff and we're gonna talk about that today. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to teach you how to make two items that are FODMAP friendly. Now, anybody here follow the FODMAP diet now? I know a couple, okay. Like, I, like, I know a couple of patients I have here follow the FODMAP diet. So who, have, who, who is following the FODMAP diet? They know there are two things, and it's the hardest thing to get away from in cooking. Garlic and onions, right? You're following the FODMAP diet, you can't have garlic and onions. You can't have garlic or onion powder, you can't have garlic or onions whole, you can't have them cooked. So it becomes a real pain. Now, whoever thought that you could have salsa on a FODMAP friendly diet, right? And have it actually taste good. So I can tell you firsthand, the recipe that we're gonna do, the salsa recipe, I have made. I made it for a party last weekend and nobody knew it was FODMAP friendly. I told them at the end. And they were like, what does that mean? So then I had to explain it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the FODMAP friendly salsa and everything here you guys can try at the end, okay? So is it on one of those papers? It's on right here. The recipe is right here, okay? It has chives in it, green onions, because the green part of the onions are okay. Here is where all the fermentable carbs are. So this is the part that you can't have, but you can cook the top part, okay? Or eat it. It has parsley, cilantro, peppers, diced tomatoes, right? Canned diced tomatoes. How easy is that? I don't have to sit here and dice tomatoes. Um, roasted peppers, a can of green chilies, lime juice, chili powder. How easy can that be, right? You just put it all together in a bowl. So that's what we're going to start doing. I'm going to have my little niece, who's over here, she's my uh, partner in crime for cooking. She's going to be mixing everything for me today. Are you going to make some of it without the chili? Well, the salsa has the chili in it, so I'm going to make this with the chilies. So first thing we're going to do is chop up some parsley. And we're going to add that to the bowl. Here, bring the bowl over a little bit. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is add the green onions. Anybody ever taste green onions before? Use it frequently when they're cooking? Scallions. Scallions, right? They have a very, very similar flavor as regular onions. Now, I'm sorry, this is my little son up here. He's four. Say hi, Char. 
He follows me around everywhere. <laughs> and I can't tell him no, I'm a mom. <laughs> so we put the green, so the green onions I use a lot of times, if you want to make IBS recipes, FODMAP friendly recipes, you use these instead of onions. In a tomato sauce, they'll work just the same. It'll give you that flavor, okay? Next thing is we're gonna put some cilantro in. Just the top parts. Cilantro. Cilantro, right? Now who doesn't have salsa or any kind of taco or anything without cilantro, right? It is a FODMAP friendly herb. You can have it. So we'll do the cilantro. Then we're gonna do chives. Okay. About a handful. About a quarter cup, about a handful though. I'm not good with measuring unless it comes to baking. I normally eyeball everything. Any recipe I ever give out to patients, by the way, too, is I always test it first. I'll test it, I'll usually tweak some of them sometimes, but they're always tested first by me. So we add the chives, right? Then we're gonna add the roasted peppers with the juice. So we're gonna take it out, and I'm gonna chop off the roasted peppers real quick. Just give it a quick dice. And these peppers are gonna go in. Now whoever thought this, a salsa could be this easy, right? And it's FODMAP friendly. A lot of the times when you're looking to do the salsas or something like that, and you're trying to make it and it's not even FODMAP friendly, it could take a while, because you gotta do all the dicing of the tomatoes and things like that. Putting a can of diced tomatoes in is a lot easier. So, she wants to know what kind of peppers are these? Oh, what kind of peppers are these? These are the banana peppers. Oh. And now we're going to put the tomatoes in. And Alex, can you give everything a good mix while we're doing this? Okay. I put a little bit of juice from the green chilies in. Now we're gonna put chili powder. Also FODMAP friendly. Could you explain what that means? We're gonna talk about FODMAP in a second, okay? We're gonna cook all this stuff because I'm cooking buffalo chicken meatballs. Now, I know a lot of patients that have IBS go, I, I can't eat buffalo chicken meatballs. Like that, that's spicy. Yeah. You can, no, if can't. you're following the FODMAP friendly, if you're following the FODMAP diet, you can. Is the spicy part necessary in it? Because what if you don't like spicy? If you don't like spicy, you just don't have to have it, you know, the spicy part. But this is all fine map friendly stuff we're talking about, okay? But that doesn't change it from being five map so, all right, thank you, Alex. It doesn't change it from being FODMAP friendly, though, right? If you don't put the chili no, in the no, 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 no. The stuff all here is FODMAP friendly, so there's nothing that you have to worry about, okay? That it's, is it going to be FODMAP friendly or not? As long as if you're going to take out something, it's okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the meatballs. So the, this is turkey meat. Um, anybody, or turkey meat, chicken meat, I'm sorry. Anybody ever cook with ground chicken before? What? It's ground chicken. You ever use ground chicken instead yeah. of beef, yeah. right? Yeah, I eat ground turkey. Ground turkey. I like using these because, besides a FODMAP standpoint, it's a leaner cut of meat. I'm using chicken instead of beef, okay? If you're putting different flavoring in it, a lot of times you won't miss the stuff that's in the beef. Um, I use, I put two packages in here, one dark meat, one white meat. So I still have the fat content when I'm cooking. Did you say that's turkey or chicken? This is chicken we're using here because we're making buffalo chicken meat. Turkey, turkey, turkey you can use too. So we're going to put about a quarter of a cup of gluten-free breadcrumbs. I got these right here in Adams, okay? Glutino mm -hmm. gluten-free, these breadcrumbs are awesome. So if you're, if you're following a gluten-free diet because you have celiac disease or a wheat intolerance, 
If you're following the FODMAP friendly diet, the Glutina ones are awesome. They're right over there in the first aisle. So we put that in, then we're gonna chop up a little more parsley. Okay. We're gonna crack an egg. Can you crack an egg in here, Alex, for me? This doesn't call for it in the recipe that's on here, but we're gonna add a little bit of the ancho chili powder in here too. Okay. And then the rest of these, you can either cook these in the oven, okay, if you wanna bake them in the oven, or you can make them on a skillet top. I don't have an oven today, so we're making them on a stove top. Butter is FODMAP friendly. You can either use coconut oil, I've made these using coconut oil or regular oil, or you can use butter with it. So a couple of tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna melt it down. All right, Alex, you're gonna mix all this up for me, okay? And after this melts down, then we're gonna put what goes in better to anything with buffalo wings, buffalo meatballs. You gotta have hot sauce. Now, not all hot sauce is FODMAP friendly. You have to look. Louisiana hot sauce, Crystal's hot sauce, Frank's Red Pot hot sauce. Those are all FODMAP friendly hot sauces that you can have. Okay. So I'll get the butter nice and melted. Teresa, how would you know? Does it actually use the term FODMAP friendly on it? Or no. So FODMAP friendly, because like I said, it's, it is a cutting edge diet. It's, it's fairly new compared to all the other diets out there. So not everything is gonna have to say like, you know, you're looking for celiac that's like gluten free on it. But we're gonna talk about how to read a label and how we're gonna determine if something is FODMAP friendly or not. I know these look hot, they're not as hot as you would think once they're cooked down in here with the butter. Okay. You can smell it, right? I, imagine yeah. how I feel right here, right? In my face. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start just, Alex, you're gonna help me here? We're gonna take the meatballs and we're gonna make some meatballs. You know what, I'm gonna add a little more breadcrumb to that. Here, open it up and put it in. Yep, oh, not the whole thing. <coughs> Help me make some meatballs, Alex. Okay, so just put them right in because they're gonna cook right in this little sauce here. And by the end of the presentation, these will be nice and everybody can have one to try. If you'd like. <laughs> I understand if they're too spicy. Smells good, you like it? I'm gonna add a little more butter, just so nothing will burn. When you're doing it on the stove top, you're gonna be adding a little bit more fat because you have to cook it in something. Mm -hmm. um, but if you do it in the oven, you could do it for a lot less fat, but it's Super Bowl Sunday, right? So mm -hmm. let's have that, let's have some fat. Everything's good in moderation. So, I'm gonna let you finish rolling these out. Okay? I'm gonna start talking about my, my FODMAP stuff. Is that okay? Can you do that for me? Thank you. Let's put them right in. She's my chef in training. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you <Feels> good. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start talking about FODMAP, okay? So, anybody who has IBS will relate to this, okay? So this is like with Annie. Golly G, I sure do love salads. Oh boy, when you're young, right? Your body can tolerate everything. And as we get older, older golly gee, I sure do eat salad. It sucks, right? Because as you get older, your body changes, different things happen. 
So you can't tolerate maybe what you used to tolerate. So what does FODMAP stand for? Okay, so FODMAP stands for mouthful, fermentable, oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. And all of you can look at me and go, what the? does that mean? <laughs> we'll talk about what that means. I'm going to break it down to actual foods for everybody so you kind of better understand it and you kind of get where we're going with this. So what FODMAPs are in our diet, they're fermentable carbohydrates that are found in the body, that are, that are, that are found in the body, and not all carbs are FODMAPs. So a lot of people think that if you're following a low FODMAP diet and we're talking about carbs, right, fermentable carbs, well, I just can't have carbs. <laughs> Well, that's not, that's not true at all. Certain ones have a higher amount of fermentable carbs than others. So we're going to talk about which ones you do and which ones are safe to have and which ones are not safe to have. So, why do we use this diet? Well, I talked about it a little bit. We use this diet for IBS. IBS affects up to one in five Americans. It's characterized by symptoms of abdominal pain, gas, wind, bloating, change in bowel habits, ranging, ranging from you have diarrhea all the way up to you have constipation, and then it reverses itself again. Um, symptoms can lead to reduced quality of life. I've had patients that have come to me before for the FODMAP diet that we, I started somebody on. The young gentleman, he was in his 30s. He was unable to work anymore. Wasn't really able to socialize a lot anymore. Um, because his IBS symptoms were so severe. Now, I'm not saying it was just the diet. He saw a gastroenterologist too, but he did go on the FODMAP diet. A month later, he came to me and said, I feel so much better. I said, okay, so we kept going, progressing with the FODMAP diet. Three months later, he was able to go back to work, socialize, and socialize with his friends and family again, and came back to me and said, I can't believe it works so well. Does that happen to everybody? No, I'm not gonna say it's a magic pill. But some people, it really is the FODMAPs that are the problem. And once you take them out of the diet, you realize you can have your quality of life back. Okay. What these can do. So what these small carbohydrates do is they pull water into your, into your intestines. So think of it as you have your intestines and normally somebody who has a fermentable carb that comes into their gut, you might get a little bit of discomfort. I don't have IBS, so I know that if I have a fermentable carb, I may get a little bit of discomfort, maybe some gas or something like that. Anybody who eats one of these would. Not a big deal, go about your day, doesn't bother you at all. Somebody who has IBS or is sensitive to these, what happens is it pulls water into the gut, okay? And what happens is when we pull water into our gut, we get gas, bloating, abdominal pain, constipation, and diarrhea. That's where all these symptoms come from. So a lot of times, all these fermentable carbs are almost considered like fast food for your gut, because honestly, that doesn't really mean this, but when you think about it, it's gonna come in, it's probably gonna go out just as fast. So, anybody who has IBS, may have felt like this in the past. <laughs> so this woman is pregnant. And she's like, I'm nine months pregnant. I, I'm due soon. She's asking this other woman, so how long till you, you know, till you give birth? Well, until they have a silver cure for IBS yes, because she's not pregnant. <laughs> a lot of times if you ever see pictures or you ever have, like I said, a friend who has IBS and they feel they say I'm bloated, if you look at their stomachs, you look at their abdomen, sometimes they are out to here and it does look like they are nine months pregnant. So this is a, a map, this is what kind of tells you what happens when the FODMAPs enter your small intestines, okay? Yeah. So the FODMAPs go in, gas production, ability, extension, flatulence, abdominal pain, and constipation, okay? Has, if anybody wants to take the home leader, you should be here too, okay? So where are they found? Well, they're found in fructose, okay? So, a simple carb which is found in fruits, vegetables, and added sugar. So that's where fructose is found, okay? It's also found in lactose. Lactose is found in dairy products. They're also found in fruit cans. 
Fructans are found in grains, okay? Wheat, spelt, barley, rye. 